Right, let's do the Mandelbrot set in Excel. Now, why would you want to do this? I, I don't know. You probably shouldn't. I just do it because I'm an idiot, belligerent, and mostly motivated by spite. So, yeah, you can do it in this. Uh, you probably shouldn't. Maybe it's helpful in some ways. Uh, so what is the Mandelbrot set? So uh, it's a fractal. It's the prototypical fractal number file I've covered it. I'm sure YouTube has got more than enough videos of people zooming in on it. Uh, I'm not going to cover the maths in too much detail, but the basic idea is this equation here. Deceptively simple, but it produces this amazingly complicated pattern, which is probably why it's been uh, like an enduring kind of image, hasn't it? All of this complexity from something so simple. So the idea is that you take a number, uh, usually you start at zero, then you square it, and you add a particular constant to it to get the next number in the sequence. And then you square that number and add the same constant. Then you square it again, add the same constant, square it again, add the same constant. Now in real numbers, number line one, two, three, four, uh, and so on, that's actually kind of boring. Nothing very interesting happens. But in the complex plane, where you've got real numbers in that direction and your lateral slash imaginary numbers in that direction, uh, things get a bit more interesting because complex numbers, when you multiply them or square them, they start to kind of circle around. So the this, as you go through and iterate this, it might go here, 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 jump around, jump around, jump around, and kind of one of two things happen. Either it escapes off and blows up to infinity, or it kind of centralizes on an individual number. Now, uh, in the Mandelbrot set, uh, it's colored black if we think it's going to converge. And then, if not, we kind of color code it based on how fast is it going to uh, escape and, and so on. So we can't really say for sure that it will definitely converge, but we can iterate through dozens, hundreds, even thousands of times and find that it kind of is converging and we color it black. That's, that's kind of it. That's as far as into the maths I'm going to go into. Uh, now I'm going to start with kind of a blank sheet here. I've already set this up to be the right scale. It's just two sequences going up and down. I've made it a square grid. Uh, and I'm going to set myself up a complex plane. So I'm going to use the function called complex. Yep, Excel does manage complex numbers. It uses imaginary numbers. They're awkward, but it does it. So complex, let's do that as the real number and that as the imaginary number. Now, you might be thinking, ah, you put these in with sequences. Let's put a hash on the end. Oh, if it was this simple, but it isn't. These functions do not play nicely with the dynamic array. So we've got to go do it old school, dragging and dropping. So here we go. Minus 1.5, minus 1.5 times the imaginary unit i. So here we go. Oop, we could fill that like so. Um, except actually, I'm going to get rid of that border. Otherwise, I'll keep dragging it around. So let's just get rid of the border for now. So we could fill this. We've got to drag it across and so on. Uh, except, oh, yes, because we're now dragging it across. I've got to lock off certain axes. So I've got to lock off number one, and I've got to lock off A. So this actually does it quite quick if it doesn't have to then redo everything with an error. So there we go. So that's kind of our complex plane. So we do complex and that. Now, the Mandelbrot set uh, requires two functions. Uh, one thing, we've got to square this and then add a new thing. And we can't just go that plus this error. We've got to kind of use the imaginary functions to do this, or the complex number functions. So if we wanted to say, let's say complex uh, one, two, complex two, one, Right, two complex numbers. I can't just add these. Doesn't work. I've got to use uh, imaginary sum. So I can add that, add that, it'll sum them together, no problem. Basically, cause I think this must be a hack on top of it because this is basically being treated as a text string rather than like a 2D grid of numbers or something like that. And if I want to multiply them, well, I need to do imaginary product. There we go. 
you can see it's, it has a bit of a spin around. And if I want to raise them to a power, I need to use im power. So I can put raise that to the power two. There we go. I'm not going to dig too much into this. But what we can do is if we start with this, well, we want to do imaginary power two. And around that, I want imaginary sum, I am sum, sorry, of that complex function. And well, the same thing again. So I'm going to just copy and paste that to save me some effort. So there we go. There was like the first iteration of the Mandelbrot set. Where do these things lie? Now, this is just an imaginary grid. Uh, they're just numbers for now. What we need to know is how far away are they from the center? Kind of what's the absolute magnitude? So for that, we need IM abs, or the imaginary absolute. This will always be a single number. And what you can kind of see is kind of zero towards the, big, the middle. It gets bigger. So what we can do now is kind of start iterating this. So we can copy and paste where it says imaginary sum uh, all the way to the end, everything inside that. We can copy that. And here is the complex number here. That's the thing we start with. So I'm going to paste that into there and we get our second iteration. We can see these ones outside are really firing off up to a high number, uh, but actually we're still zero. We're kind of zero one-ish here. And maybe you'll be able to see kind of a shape forming if we do this. Uh, I'm gonna find that again, just that Z number there, paste it in. In fact, let's just do a couple wherever it says this complex inside the imaginary power function. I'll just paste the same thing in. So this is kind of nesting multiple functions and uh, we can drag it across. And now these numbers are getting so big they can't be displayed, uh, but we're starting to see kind of a pattern. Let's change this slightly, maybe to minus 1.7, we'll shift it across, maybe minus two, there we go. So we can kind of see that pattern appearing. Now, pasting that in is gonna be an absolute nightmare to do again and again and again. So what we are going to do is use a recursive lambda to do this, uh, which I've done a few times now. I'm getting reasonably good at knowing how to use these now. It's quite neat, uh, neat things. So for one thing, I'm going to put in this corner um, 20, because this is just gonna be what my limit is. I wanna put it somewhere kind of convenient-ish. So <clears throat> let's start with kind of what is the lambda going to be? So the parameters I need for this are going to be Z and C and then I and then I'm going to pipe a limit to it. <clears throat> we could deal with that uh, elsewhere, but I'm just going to put them in here. So we need Z, that's going to be our input that we iterate on C. That's the constant. So each one of these locations is that constant. Uh, and then we need a limit. <coughs> right, so the first thing we need to do is how are we going to escape the function? When do we want it to stop? Otherwise it'll just continue being called forever. So we start with if, and there's actually, there's two conditions that I want this to stop on. So I'm gonna add in or as a logical um, kind of test here. So if one of these two functions is true, it's gonna stop. So if i is equal to the limit, or if the imaginary absolute value of z, our input value, is greater than two. So there's kind of a mathematical proof about this. If it's greater than two, it's not coming back, it's not going to converge, so we can stop it. So we will end it there. So if one of those two conditions are met, I want to return i. <coughs> that's going to be a number and is going to be how many iterations we've done. If that is all false, we're ready to call it again. Well, we'll call the function and I'm going to call it Mandelbrot and let's have a look at what things we need. So we need to do uh, C, I, deal with Z last. C, we're going to remain exactly the same. We're not going to change that. 
i we're going to add one to it because we're going to increment the loop and then the limit well i'll just pipe the limit back to it close off a couple of brackets there so it's all done now the mandelbrot function what is this well we're going to use what we had earlier uh the imaginary sum of i am power of the input z squared uh, and that's going to be summed with c and that should just be it hopefully this will just return a calculation error control c that then in my name manager i'm going to put this in i'm going to name it mandelbrot which is what i added paste that in there okay that so now if i type mandelbrot well, my Z, my input, well, actually, I'm going to start with zero. I'm not going to initiate with anything else. But the constant is going to be a complex number, and the real component is going to be that. I'm going to remember to lock off uh, row one. And the imaginary component is going to be that. I'm going to remember to lock off column A. I don't really need anything other than that. I am going to initiate as just one you can do it at zero if you want, it doesn't really matter. And the limit, uh, I'm going to feed it in as just that. Let's make sure I lock that off. So that should now just return. Um, how many iterations does it take to escape to get that absolute value above two? And you can see already in the top corner it just took one. Ooh, it took two for there. And now we can see we've got these 20s in the middle. That is because it's hitting the limit. It hasn't kind of escaped out yet. Um, so it's been highlighted as 20. So now let's get some conditional formatting in. And conditional formatting highlight cells rule, if it's equal to, well, if it's equal to the limit, well, I'm gonna do it the traditional way the Mandelbrot's done, just fill it in with black. Okay, that's so you can start to see that's kind of the shape we're after. And conditional formatting, we're going to do another one, color scales. If I manage the rules, I can move the priority around so that the black one will, uh, whenever we hit the limit, it'll always be black, and if not, you know, we get that color scale. So this is, I think they call it escape velocity, technically, um, that's the number. And again, all we need to do is change our number format three semicolons there and you know, there we are we're now seeing it appear and what I can do is I can just ramp this number up to however high I want uh, 50 you can get it a bit higher resolution 100 probably don't need uh, that high unless we really expand the size of this so what I could do is kind of add more to this I could double the size of this um, double the size of this as well Let's just see, 50 just wanted to scale it in a particular way and now I can begin well let's drag all this to make it squarish again yeah unfortunately it doesn't work with the dynamic arrays but you can see it's not gonna fill in everything for me we're starting to see that plot appear because it is not magic it is just some mathematics you could do this on a calculator if you really wanted and now if we ramp that up to maybe 200 iterations choose through and we start to get to see that mandelbrot set uh, mandelbrot set uh, shape so if you ramp it up to much higher values how, how many cells is this i think it's like 256 cells vertically and like one and a half of that wide you can sign to start to get uh, some pretty good resolution for it. Obviously, if you want to do this properly, use proper software, something that can churn through the imaginary numbers really fast and efficiently and do it on a pixel basis. Don't do this for anything other than just testing and, and playing around, please. Uh, this, is, this is not 100% serious work. This is just messing around, obviously. Uh, but you can do it. That's the thing. You can do it. Belligerence and spite will get you really quite far with this.